All right, uh, good morning everyone. Uh, welcome to CS1010 East uh, tutorial in week two. Um, I know most of you are freshmen, so this might be your first tutorial ever since um, yeah, since other modules have their tutorials from week three. Perhaps this might be your first tutorial. Well then, welcome. So, um, uh, we'll just start with some administrative uh, stuff first, so we can have this tutorial running smoothly. Uh, okay. okay. Alright, um, a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Matthias Aaron. I'm a year three business analytics student. Um, I took CS1010S, not cs 10 Um So yeah, even though I don't take cs 10 e uh, I have been a TA for this mod for two semesters. So I should be well first about the materials already. You can feel free to ask me about anything. Also, for those of you who are curious in future CS mods, I have taken CS2030 and CS2040 as well. Um, about my CCA life, I've, I'm currently in NUS Aplo Ensemble, which is a musical instrument that you can see on the, on the painting in the background of myself. Um, that painting is located in the National Gallery. And I'm also in the NUSU Committee for Information Technology. And just as a shameless promotion, we are opening recruitment. And yeah, engineering students are definitely welcome. So for those of you who are interested, feel free to reach out to me. Um, and for those of you who found my, who finds my accent quite off, uh, I'm a, in fact an Indonesian. So for those of you who feels my uh, accent a bit off, please forgive me. But my English isn't perfect as well. So uh, yeah, but I do hope that um, I don't have to speak English much. I can. Uh, because for this mod, I should be speaking more in Python rather than in English. Um, okay, next, uh, tutorial administrative matters. Uh, first of all, you can contact me at this email, that is 9 at comp.nus.e2.sg. I prefer, uh, personally, I prefer email because um, it helps me uh, it gives me time to process the question, your question and answering your question. Uh, but yeah, since everything is online and I don't think you'll be meeting me anytime soon. So uh, I've, also, I've also created a Telegram group. Uh, let me just share. So yeah, I've sent a chat. To, uh, I've sent the link to the group chat. I hope that's the correct link. So um, if you would like to, you can join the Telegram group. If you guys can join, just join. Uh, that the Telegram group, right? The purpose is for us to have discussions about assignments, practical exams, uh, final exams, anything lah. Even some random stuff. Because um, in my opinion, uh, those who succeed in this mod are people who, who take this mod together with a friend. Someone that they can discuss matters with, someone that they can talk to and work together with, although not cheating or plagiarizing. So, um, for those of you who are taking this mod online, eh, alone, feel free to find a friend in the Telegram group. And if you have any questions, feel free just to raise it in the group. Okay. Um, I also love to communicate to you guys via cosmology comments. So through your assignments, uh, I, I just love when you guys leave comments and then I just reply to them or sometimes I'll drop comments on my own. However, uh, for this uh, tutorial, I would not be grading your assignments. Uh, someone else will be grading your assignments. So I won't be uh, spending much time reading your cosmology submissions unless you ask me to. I also teach other tutorial classes on Wednesday 10 to 12 and then another on Wednesday 12 to 2. And then lastly is this class on Friday. And you can go for makeup class, but please uh, email beforehand. Uh, um, just let me know beforehand because uh, yeah, uh, it's a, a course, pol course policy not for you not to just jump around tutorials and pick whichever TA is best. Uh. Um, next. I will not disseminate the slides because I think the prof will disseminate it himself. So I don't think there should be a constant for any of you who don't receive my slides. The slides can be retrieved in cosmology workbin. 
The tutorials will be recorded, but I think it's going to be pretty useless as I hopefully plan the class to be instructive. Uh, give me some time to uh, upload the tutorial recording as I will be doing a very light edit on the tutorial recording. La. There are some parts that I will remove, some parts that are paused, that are irrelevant. And then uh, I will also be creating some notebooks for you to recap the tutorial materials in my GitHub, but it's still under construction. La. So I'll let you guys know when it is ready. All right. Um, with that, uh, are there any questions? Ooh, 30 people. I didn't expect to have 30 people. That's a lot. Okay. Okay, uh, any questions? Um, if not, uh, perhaps let's try the Zoom feature. If there are no questions, please just raise a thumbs up or reaction. Okay, I just see four, five, thumbs up, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, cool, cool. So the rest, are you okay? Uh, <laughs> oh, um, no, I'm just asking if everything is, is okay, just like raise a thumbs up, uh, just to test out the feature. And you know, like I'll be asking quite a, a lot of times, like uh, for you guys to raise your thumbs or just like raise a clap because uh, I just, because uh, you know, because of online tutorial, I won't be able to see your face because, yeah, lah. Um, because it's Zoom and I won't be hearing your voices as well. So I'll be needing some sort, some form of indicator that you guys are still there and listening. So I'll be asking you guys to raise your thumbs a lot. Lah. Even if you're not listening, if you just raise your thumbs, at least I know that oh, you guys are there and I'm not speaking to a wall. Okay, but thank you. So now uh, enough about the course administrative matters. Let's jump into uh, our material today. So, yes, for this course, we'll be using this wonderful Python shell or console to be doing our work. Uh, if you open IDL yeah, the first time, this should be the thing that you see. Right, when you type in one line, it will give you a written value of the previous line. And, and the thing is, not all command will give you a written value because some does not have an echo set statement. Let me do a quick demo. Where is it? Ah, perfect. Okay, so we have this Python shell. I hope you can see where you can just like one plus two, three, four plus five, six, nine, yeah. Yada yada yada. Now some of you may not be familiar with IDLE. Some of you might be confused how you can define functions. Where in functions, you need multiple lines. For example, like function at Then like if, uh, if you want to add like return. And then if you want to change it, then like you need to copy paste it and paste it again, which is not not practical. Uh. So for those of you who are not, sh if you don't know, there is actually a way for you to actually uh, write multiple lines of code and then run it afterwards, which is basically the text editor. How to access the text editor through IDLE is that you go to file, you create new file, and then after you open new file, a uh, text editor should have showed up like this. Then here you can write whatever thing you want. Lah. So for example, I'm typing hello world here. Then I type, I'm typing the second line. Hello world again, that smiley face. And see, it's perfectly fine. I can write multiple lines without ever having without being afraid that it will run here or I press something wrong. Then you go to run, run module or F5 for shortcut. Make sure that your code is saved first somewhere. For this demo, I'll just name my file as testpy, which I have already. 
So I'm just going to replace it. And then once I run it, it will just run here. It will immediately execute all lines of code in this section. So it is, so yeah, maybe I'll go again. It will, to show you that it will run everything at once, I'll do this at, and I'll press F5 or run module, save it, and see, it will execute everything from top to bottom. And it gives you the ease to edit alongside of it, you know, creating the testing and trial and error process faster, instead of just copy pasting, you know, editing right on the console, okay? I guess this is important for those of you who haven't known it yet. So please familiarize yourself with it. Okay. Um, enough about uh, Python console. Now let's go to the tutorial worksheet. Uh, I hope you guys have. Um, I hope you guys are aware that we have a tutorial worksheet in our cosmology workbin. Um, that, yeah. If you guys are not aware and you guys haven't done the tutorial worksheet yet, it's okay. Uh, this week is quite easy that you can actually do it right on the spot. And to make things fun, I'm going to use pull EV to... Correct, it's week 2 evaluation variables and total. Correct, correct. Okay, for today's uh, tutorial, I'm going to use a uh, pull EV. I've tried it in my previous class and it looks fun. So. Just lock, in, lock yourself in to pollev.com slash MateusAaron417 and we'll be doing some uh, in-class activities. So uh, classes won't be that boring lah. I hope that I can use this in the future. Okay, uh, just for it. Uh, I think you guys can see my screen now. So if you guys have logged in, uh, let's try out the whole EV first. Let's just let's try it with the first question. Okay. How do you feel today? Okay. Can I type? Okay. Let me type the link for you there. Oh. Oh, thanks, Chin Sung. Thank you so much. Okay. There are some of you that are happy, some of you that are scared. Oh, someone's angry. Oh, and I'm not so sure. Someone's feeling naughty. Okay. More people are feeling happy today. Good, good. All right, I think every, uh, everything looks good. Um, I'm glad that the majority of you are feeling happy. Um, a quarter of you, I'm not so sure what emoji is that. Maybe it's scared, shocked, concerned about the module, which is perfectly fine for a, mod a programming module. And like some of you are feeling naughty. I guess some of you are just ready to complete this module already. All right, cool, cool. So, um, okay, stop moving. Uh, I think, uh, I think, uh, and and the poll here. Let's go to the next poll. Okay. So next question is like, what is your major? Oh my, oh. We have a mechanical engineer, electrical engineer, another mechanical engineer. Okay, some of you starting to upvote your friends' answers. Civil engineer. Oh, we have a biomedical engineer. Okay, cool. We have a food science technology. Why aren't you taking CS and that as huh? Hmm. Questions, questions. Law, surgeon major. Okay. All right. So a uh, huge majority of you inside this classroom are, are mechanical engineers. I think there's also like common engineering as well, I assume. So, okay, well done. 
Okay, okay. Now I got a rough idea. It's okay. Um, this is not a PIG poll, which are, which is the best major, so you don't have to go crazy on it. Okay, enough about the easy questions. Now let's go to the actual tutorial questions. So we're gonna do the first uh, question. Is this uh, basically if how do Python evaluate uh, these kind of statements are? So fill in your answers. I think this one is quite self-evident for those of you. Like, um, why do I see another 86 here? I'm not so sure how you got 86. And so for those of you who wrote 86 maps, do you mind in the Zoom chat to explain how you got 86? <laughs> but Anyways, it should be 17, like you can do it from left to right. You can do the multiplications first. 3 times 4 is what? 12 plus 5 is 17. Easy. Right, next question. Okay, uh, 3 plus 4 times 5. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, tiny. Okay, okay, cool, cool. 86, uh, that's where 86 comes from. Okay. Okay, so I think this one is also, thanks, thanks EJ for clarifying, it's okay. At least you know, you know the uh, operators already, which is perfectly fine. So yeah, in this case, uh, we'll do the multiplications first, which is 20, and then you plus 3, 23. Okay, we basically do the math, um, basically do it just like math. Right? Python is quite similar to normal math. Okay. Next question is maybe more challenging. Five double star three G, uh, percent side four. Okay. If you have run it through Python or you've studied, you should have known this already. Okay, there are competing answers here. There's one, there's three. So for that, let's just run it through Python and see what the answer is. Although you're not supposed to run it through Python. Lah. You take this one, copy it here, and the answer is one. Now, uh, you, we now know the answer is one, but how do we exactly know that the answer is one? So basically, here we do from left to right again. Five double star three means five to the power of three, five to the power of three, which is equals to 125. And then you may see this percent sign over here. Maybe some of you are not familiar. Those of you who are not familiar, this percent sign is called a modulo. This two stars here means power. Okay. So what does a modulo do, right? So when I divide 125 divided by four, right, I get uh, 31.25. Now, or basically 31 with a remainder of one, okay? Now the modulo gives you the remainder of a division. So in this case, when the remainder is one, 125 modulo four is one, okay? Yeah. Okay, some of you are already starting to getting frustrated, I assume. It's okay, relax. It's still like the first question. Don't worry, like these kinds of questions are still the easy ones. Lah. Like the ones that come up in finals are should be harder than this. Anyways, I think the next question should, you guys should have understood. Okay. 97 divided by four. All right, 24.25, cool. Everyone agree? Agree. How about uh, your next question, 97 double slash four? Good, I guess uh, uh, I guess now you know, you kind of know what's the difference between 97 divided by four and 97 double slash four. Now, okay, that's the next, that's actually my next question, yes, yeah. So now the next question is, uh, what's the difference between a, a single slash and a double slash? A div.
Okay, um, yeah, everyone please answer. Okay, I, I see. Okay, I see a lot of answers. Okay, uh, what is the exact meaning of floating number, Ash? Okay, I'll explain later. Okay, I think most of you already got the answers, right? Um, you guys must have done a lot of studying in the past one week. Um, I applaud you guys for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. I see a few answers. I mean, you guys should have seen a few answers. Uh, you guys can see a few answers in my screen as well. So there's this finds the closest integer and finds the actual value. One divide one answer give quotient what? Slash means division, while double backslash means the number of times the third. Oh, we have to do a lot of studying. Oh, we are completely gone during assignments. Welcome to computing, guys. Welcome. <laughs> So, okay, I think most of you have answered, and most of you give actually good answers. And the very precise answer is actually this one. Uh, this one. A single slash is division, and a double slash is floor division. So what does a floor division mean is that you don't, simply, you don't simply truncate the decimal points. You don't just simply remove the decimal points, okay? But what happens is that you round down, you round down the numbers. The key word here is rounding down. So even if your number is like, even if your number is like uh, 24.9, right, it won't be round uh, when you divide it by two. It will, okay, uh, maybe. Uh, uh, no, actually, that's a, no, actually, it's impossible. Basically, when you do divisions, right, um, you are rounding it down even if it's the decimal points are closer to the upper bound. So let me think of an example, maybe like five divided by three. Yeah. If you are just rounding this up, right? Rounding this up will give you, we should go to two. But uh, this one is rounding down. It means that it will round down to one instead to the bottom limit. And this actually, uh, this is actually important, this concept, because it will affect your calculations when your number is negative. So, We'll try again. When 97 divided by 4, it gives you 24.85. 97 floor division 4 gives you 24. Now let's try negative numbers. When negative 97 divided by 4, it will give you negative 24.35 as expected. Basically negating this. Right. But if you say that we're just like taking the integer part and removing the decimal, it should have given us negative 24, correct? But the th thing is, it's not like that. When you divide, uh, when you have negative 97, floor divide by four, it actually gives you negative 25, rounding it up, rounding it down to the lower number. I hope everyone is clear on this. All right. So, uh, Yeche asked about like what does a floating number mean. So in Python, right, we don't just see numbers as numbers. We actually differentiate uh, numbers. One is whole numbers, so like for example 23, and others are floating numbers. Floating numbers are basically anything with a decimal point. So 23.0, eh, sorry, oops. 23.0 is a float number. So if I type type 23.0 here, it gives me float, but if you I give you type 23, it gives me integer. The value is the same, but the way it's written is different. And generally speaking, if you don't have to use float, use integer because pro because computers can get funky when it comes to float. It can be quite imprecise. For example, right, um, one divided by three is three three three. But like, if I, if I think this one is a common case. I mean, like logically, one over three is like zero point three three three, but if you like, I think I'll try this one. I forgot what was the case. Uh. 
like this lah. Like it's supposed to give me like zero point nine 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 lah. But in this case, it just rounds up to one, which is not exactly correct lah. Okay. Uh, type pi. Uh, okay. Where? Uh. Okay. Forgot. Uh, oh yeah. So in this case, you can see uh, math pi is a float because it has decimal points. Okay. Okay. Enough about. Oops. Enough about this. Let's move on. Now I hope you guys are okay. If you guys are okay, just uh, give me a thumbs up again. Wonderful. All right, let's move on to the next part, which is logical operators. Now for logical operators, let's make it a little bit more fun by doing a mini computation that is in no way, uh, that is in no way re related to your grades, nor graded, nor will there be any prizes. So everyone, if you guys haven't joined, please feel free to join. That's, this is like something like Kahoot, but instead of Kahoot, we'll stop by every question and discuss every question. Okay, if everyone is ready, our first question is, uh, if valid this statement, is one equals to one, true or false? Yeah, five seconds, which my timer doesn't work. Okay. 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 Okay, now my timer works. Okay, it's a bit weird. All right, uh, I hope it works. Let me try it. Okay, for those of you who haven't voted, okay. Okay, let's see. Okay, the poll is locked. Yeah, I know, it's a bit funky. Let me just fix it for you. Uh, let's start again. Okay. Okay, I think my internet is not working, lah. But let's let's see. Okay, let's try again. Five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. So okay, time's up. And yep, I think it's quite obvious, like one should be equal to one. Don't try to convince me the other way around that one is equal to two. Okay, so in this case, Python will evaluate this as true. Next. Okay, we have, okay, it looks good. I think a few of you already tried the platform. Let's move on to the next question. The next question on your tutorial sheet is three plus two is equal to one plus four. What will Python evaluate this to? All right, all right, five, your five seconds is up. So the answer is uh, true, because this evaluates to five, and this evaluates to five. Okay, same, please don't try to convince me otherwise that these are not equals. Hence, uh, this is a leaderboard. Okay, still the same. So with that in mind, we have another counter question. So what does 3 plus 2 not equal to 1 plus 4 evaluates to? 5 seconds. All right, 5 seconds is up. So yep, because three, these are two equals, right? When we use uh, the not equal sign, right? The answer is false. Because technically these are equal, hence this entire statement is actually false. Right? Next up on the leaderboard, we have everyone. Some are already starting to fall behind. Uh, GPA zero, congratulations. I'm quite surprised that for some, not bad GPA zero. Okay. All right, next up. Okay, uh, four greater than three, is it true or false? Two, one. All right, time's up. And 
Okay, I think someone is trying to intentionally be wrong for all questions. Uh, I'm not so sure what happens here. But yes, 4 is indeed greater than 3, okay? Um, I cannot explain that any further. Next up. Oh, okay. Next. 4 is greater than 4. Is it true or false? 2, 1. Alright, time's up. Correct, 4 is not greater than 4. In fact, 4 is equal to 4. So if you actually have a sign like this, this will evaluate as true. Or perhaps 4 equals to 4. But this one is definitely false because they are actually the same number and they're not greater than each other. Okay, next, ooh, we have, everyone has got it correct. I guess it's only a matter of how fast you click it. Next, 6 plus 3, great, less than 9 plus 3. True or false? 2, 1, time's up. Yes, correct, it's true. Basically, you can cross out the 3. Basically, 6 is indeed less than 9. Right? I think everyone got this right. Leaderboard, I think that there's no changes. Yeah. Next up. True or false? Are they true or are they false? Alright, time's up. Uh, and yeah, correct. The answer is true. Because in an OR statement, basically it just tries to evaluate any statement that's going to... It evaluates just two statements connected by the OR. And then basically in OR, in OR right, all, all, at least one needs to be true for the entire statement to be true. So in this case, we have true here, we have false. Because we have one true over here, everything becomes true. Well done. Next up. All right, some oh, she pays zero. You are not uh, falling out from the leaderboard. It's okay. Next up is true and bracket false or true. Five seconds. All right, time's up. Now, okay, okay. So actually, there's quite a few got got it wrong. So again, uh, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate what's in the brackets first. It feels that, you know, those in brackets are special. So we're going to evaluate this first. We found the connecting statement, which is all, and these are the two statements before and after. We have true and we have false. Hence, this will evaluate as true. Then now we have a new statement, true and true. Now we found the connecting word, which is and, and I think for some of you, uh, some of you or should have known that in the word and, right, for us, the entire statement to be true, right, all the connecting statements must be true. Having one false statement will cr create the entire premise false. So in this case, we have true and true. Since everything is true, I think if this is undoubtedly true. Yes, the answer is true. Alright, next up, right, I think that, oh, not much changes in the leaderboard. Next up, we have, not true. Is it true or is it false? Or is it fake news? Alright, time's up. The answer is false. Because uh, the keyword not here, right, basically negates anything that's behind. So in this case, this is the statement that's behind, which is evaluated as true. You simply negate it as false. Right? Pretty easy. With that in mind, so what's next? Okay, I'll skip the leaderboard for now. What's, what's not false? Anti-fake news, perhaps. All right, time's up. As you guys have guessed, it's not false, it's 100% true. Well done. Now we have reached the 10,000 point mark. Next is a funkier one, a double negation, not not true. Is it true or is it false? And time's up. The answer is true. Because not true is false, and not false, as we evaluated earlier, 
is true. So the answer is true. So when you see this, right, it just like cancels it out. Okay, cancels each other's out. All right. The leaderboard. Uh, ooh, the number ones are the list of number ones are is getting smaller and smaller between Angel, Cassandra, Daniel, and Haha. H H. All right. What's this? A number, not zero. What does this evaluate to? It's a bit weird to evaluate the true value of a number, but what does it evaluate to? Time's up. And the answer is true. Well done. So it means if this is true, right, if we try to reverse engineer this, it means that we know that for a matter of fact, zero is evaluated as false. Here. Okay. So next up, I believe in your tutorial sheet, there's also another number that we evaluate is not 9999. What does this evaluate to? Okay, time's up. Okay, uh, the answer is false. Oh, some of you answered true. Oops, my bad. So if we can see here, right, zero is evaluated as false. And nine 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 is evaluated as true. I mean, it's if you think about it at the first place, it's quite weird actually. Cause like, why would uh, numbers be evaluated differently? Now we're gonna evaluate them more with the next question. Oh, leaderboard is now three people only. Now, okay, this one is a bonus question, like zero and nine 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 nine. What is it? Okay, time's up. Um, the answer is false. Remember, we have the conjunction N here. This will be evaluated as false. Oh, someone left. Ooh. And this will be evaluated as true. Because there's this one false statement, and everything is evaluated as false. Okay. Leaderboard. Oh, we have two left. Cool, cool. Okay, next, we'll, we'll be dealing with string. How do you evaluate the true value of a string? In this case, we have not A, B, C. What is it? All right, not A, B, C is evaluated as, oh, some of you are confused. When you are evaluating the true value of A, B, C, the answer is false. So reverse engineering this, false, means that this will be evaluated as true means ABC is true. Next. Wow. Congratulations, HH. Now he's at the very top. Congratulations. Now next is not empty string, okay? Uh, to clarify, this here is an empty string, not double quotation mark, okay? Okay, is everyone ready? Let's go. Two, one. Okay. The answer is, the answer is, oh, okay. Someone is going for swap. Okay. Okay, that's, that's new. Someone leaving my tutorial for swap test. Okay. <laughs> okay, so yeah, the answer is, uh, true means that this is evaluated as false. Okay, now let's see the leaderboard first. Congratulations, HH, for making a perfect shake of 16,000 points. Well done, well done. Now, I think before we move, on, uh, move forward first, let's do a, re a small recap first of one interesting fact earlier. We evaluated earlier that zero is evaluated as false. 9999 is evaluated as true. Uh, ABC. Oh, okay. Okay. Never mind. Okay. Sorry. I, I got distracted by the Zoom chat, guys. Um, anyways, <laughs> this is evaluated as true. And an empty string is evaluated as false. 
can perhaps anyone like um if you can see the pattern here is are you guys a, a group of friends that are doing swap tests together voila you guys are hiya okay one is true too okay cool So what can we deduce from here, right? It, it feels that if it's empty or zero, right? If it's empty or zero over here, it will give us false and the rest will give us true. When there's something, it gives us true. In fact, if you guys come to that deduction, it is correct. Let me pull out my slides first. Okay, so uh, about truth, values python has keywords true true and false uh, okay what hey sorry El. not like that lah. it's okay it's okay i mean like if if you got it wrong it's okay i mean that's the purpose of tutorial right just to learn so that during finals you don't make the same mistakes Making mistakes early on is actually very beneficial in coding. I mean, even if you're like kind of answering questions wrongly, purposefully, it's it's okay because even with that, right, you learn. So yeah, in Python three, right, true false will equal to one, one or zero. So in this case, uh, uh, we can test true equals to one. It returns as true. False equals zero. Sorry, I didn't mean to offend anyone. Oops, my bad. I didn't mean to offend anyone. Eh, it's okay if at least, at least, right? At least, if from my perspective, if you, if you know that you're not good, at least you kinda acknowledge. I mean, I'm not the smartest tool in the shed as well. I'm not like super smart. Uh, all my three K mods are flailing or passing barely. So yeah, anyways, anyways, uh, too much digressing. Um, anything that is not zero or empty will be evaluated as true. I think this one is a very important concept, this particular point, and I really hope you guys remember this. Anything that is not zero or empty will be evaluated as true, meaning that if it's not zero, zero, empty string, empty list, empty tuples, empty dictionaries, anything empty, whether it's a data structure that you have not learned yet, so chill. Anything that is empty, like empty, 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 or none, this will be evaluated as false. Anything else will be evaluated as true. To test it out, we'll do we'll use the double negation because we know that the double negation will um, will keep our truth value intact. We'll try not not zero, which is false. None is false. Not not empty string is false. Not not empty list is false. Not not empty tuple is false. Not not dict empty dict is false. I hope your dict is not empty as well. But when we try to fill in a number, not not one is become true. You even if you fill in like a space right a space bar, it evaluates as true. As long as there's something in the string, it evaluates as true. I think with this also, right, please be careful because um, maybe for our eyes, right, a space bar looks empty, but to the computer, a space bar is actually a character. Hence, it will be evaluated as true. So with that, you can actually mix numbers and true values together. In this case, if you can see true and zero, return zero, not ABC is false, one or zero is one. Pretty evident. And if you guys think that you guys are stupid, now you learn. Okay, so no more excuses of being stupid anymore. So with that, there are some funky Python as well. Uh, like what when you evaluate these things, believe it or not, these are these can be evaluated. Uh. So in this case, the true values will be somewhat converted to numbers. Which, as we remember, true will be evaluated as one. In this case, true plus one is two. 
false times 5 is 0, because false is 0 times 0, just like your GPA. And 0 plus not 1 is 0, because not 1 is 0. All right. Hey, don't ask you this course, leh. I think you can get an A. Come on, my guys, try your best. Okay. Good. Pull, pull up some effort. Okay. Can do this. All right. I think that's the end. What? Did Did you give the space in front of not? A. See, it's perfectly fine. It gives you. Uh, it gives me an output. Okay, if everyone is okay, uh, before we move on, just give me a thumbs up. Okay, all right, cool. Now we are moving on to the next part, which is actually the more difficult part of today's uh, tutorial. So for this, please pull out your poll EV again. Uh, yep. How to leave this? Uh. Okay. Go to your poll EV again and prepare your poll EV. I'm gonna let's do the string manipulation part now. Mm. All right, um, let's do this. I think this one is pretty easy for those of you who have been studying. So, what does when, what happens when you add up two strings? A, B, C plus D, E, F. So yeah, I think it's very clear. The answer is A, B, C, D, E, F. Easy, right? Next up. Now we have a uh, string gala times three. What happens if you multiply string, which is not natural? Hmm. Okay, I guess everyone agrees the answer is gala gala gala. Sounds like a stupid person. So you can uh, in fact multiply string as well. Okay, the one the single gala is wrong. The single galas are wrong, so yeah. Okay. But hey, it makes a very beautiful word cloud. Next up, uh, you can actually combine uh, addition and multiplication together. So what that will this evaluate to? Yes, your sinister laughs. The laughs that the professor will make after grading your exams. Or perhaps during invigilating your exams. Okay, some of you are... Some of you need help, man. <laughs> yeah, make sure that you guys do well during your exam so your prof don't laugh like this and you will be the one laughing at the prof like this. Okay? I can actually hear the prof. I can actually imagine the prof actually laughing like this. Anyways, next up. Next, next one is a, a little bit more tricky. So be careful when you answer. Uh, I'll give you some time because it's pretty long. Meanwhile, I'll just prepare my Python shell over here. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. ha. I'm cruel. Yes, ha ha. Oh, sorry, my bad. Voila, sorry, oh my god, sorry, sorry. Eh, hey, I'm trying my best, okay? I'm trying my best. Okay, at this point, I don't think you, like, you guys even give it a try. Yeah, some of you actually put in an actual answer, which I cannot verify the correctness or not. Because it's just too damn long. This one is cute. Okay, keep on spamming, guys. Let's make a wonderful word cloud together. Lol, wonderful. Okay, 
Okay, so the final answer is, uh, here we go. This is the final answer. Ba ba bi du bi du bi, jam jam jam. Ba ba bi du bi da 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 da. Yeah, the ones here lah. So I think for this part, right? I think one thing that I wanna make sure is that actually in my in my question, there's there are spaces here, there are spaces in this pad, and when you try to multiply things, right? Don't forget the space lah. As I mentioned before, the space is actually considered a character as well. So please be careful. It will impact in your results as well. So like there are character spaces here as well, separating the words. Okay. Imagine having this class offline in an actual physical class. I need to write out in the whiteboard the entire sentence there. Eh? Uh, I'm, I'm a bit glad that we can do it online now. So yeah, I hope you guys did enjoyable learning for this part. Now, now moving on to the next part of string manipulation is basically a uh, string uh, slicing. So what does this yield to? Okay, any other answers? Really, uh, everyone answers just R, is it? Okay, um, then let's try, try it out. Um, oops, my bad. Yeah, the, the answer is R, R and A, banana. Um, I guess all of you already know, since you guys got it, it means that you guys already understood that uh, this one is to, when we have uh, brackets at the end of a string with no colon and one integer, it takes in what takes one character from the string. And I assume from your answer, you must have understood by now that the first character is actually uh, index zero in the, instead of index one. So index three is at here. I assume that everyone knows all about this since like there are no wrong answers. If everyone understands about this concept that we start at zero, please give a thumbs up because this one is a very important concept. Thumbs up. If you don't understand, give me a clap. If you don't understand, if you, if you just knew about this, Oh, I see a lot of thumbs up. It means that all of you are good. Well done. So, I think for this, it's very ob uh, obvious. Moving on to the next part. We have this banana 2 to 4. What's the answer? Uh, na, 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 na. All right, the answer is uh, na, as we can see earlier. We have banana, All right? Index two is here, index four is here. Now what happens in uh, Python slicing, we know that this is the start. This one is the stop. And uh, in Python, when we slice, right, we take from the second index and stop right before the four. Basically, uh, the stop is in very formal terms. It's exclusive. And this one is inclusive. And what the hell did you just do to my word cloud? <laughs> okay. So in this case, we'll take the banana here. All right. Next up is banana one double colon four. So okay, there are there are some answers here. There's two A's, three A's, three A's with a one quotation mark, three A's with double quotation marks. Okay, so majority of you answers three A. So yeah, the answer is three A instead of two A. Why? Again, we have this banana over here. Unfortunately, I don't have a banana for scale. So we start at index one over here 
And for those of you who are curious, this is actually a step. What does a step mean? It means that I'll make steps. Uh. By default, the step is one because a one step will be like this. But a two step means I'll take two. Oh, shoot. My bad. When I take two steps, it means that I'll jump over one character. So if I start here, right, I'll make two steps. What? Um, one, two. Another one, one, two. Now, why is there three A's instead of two? Because when... Uh, okay, should the answer be A, A, A with double quotation mark or uh, quotation mark or one? Uh, both are acceptable. Uh. Both are acceptable, at least in exams. In exams, both are answers are acceptable because we know format, we know that it's, you meant string. Uh. So in this case, when the, the, this part, right, the stop is not defined. If you have observed, right, if the stop is not defined, it means that it will just like take whatever it is until the end. Basically, it's until the end. Okay. Okay. Now you can put down your poll EV. Now let me do a little bit of teaching. So uh, for visual representation, um, this is a good way to represent a string slicing. Basically, if you want to take a slice from, oh, yeah, oh, my bad, uh, how to do back. If you want to do a string slicing of two to seven, you'll take in, you'll include index two, inclusive, right? And this is index seven over here, but you don't exclude them, and you exclude index seven. Basically, you take everything here. Okay. Uh, if, you, if you are not so sure how to do it, just imagine, right, just imagine that at the stop index, which is seven, there is a great wall, a huge great wall. Ooh, welcome back, Adele. Adele, do I pronounce your name right? Is Adel here? Oh, hey, welcome back from your swap test. I hope you are still eager to listen and you are not in pain, so much pain right now. Are you positively happy? Oh, really, though, I, I don't hope anyone is uh, COVID positive here. If anyone is positive, just let me know. Like, I'll, uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to come to your place and teach you there. I don't want to get positive. Anyways. If you are not so sure where to stop, just imagine that on top of the index, on top of the index, you have a great wall. So when you do the jumping, remember, you do the jumping, jumping part, right? Uh, when you hit the wall, right, basically you cannot jump to the bottom. Hence, you stop there. That's the easy way of imagining it. And please imagine, remember this concept because it's quite important in the next part. Negative numbers and string. Okay, we'll handle that after this. Okay. So yeah, we have A, B, C, D, E, F. What's the result of S2, S2, colon, and S2 double colon? And are they the same? As we know, for a matter of fact, that this is actually pretty, these two things are different. These two things are different. Because this one only takes, it takes one character. And this one takes a subset of string. So for those of you who haven't guessed it, uh, uh, S2 colon and S2 double colon are the same. So basically when the values are missing, they are, will be filled in with the default value over here. And yeah, uh, making them practically the same. Now, this is the question. This, this is the interesting question. Lah. What happens if we do S one to one? We start at one and stop at one. Okay. Correct. C correct. Uh, Mutu. I hope I pronounced your name right. Mutu. It will return an empty string. Where is it? So, imagine, remember my early boxes in the beginning, right? So, 
Say this is index 0, this is index 1, index 2, index 3, index 4. We have a stop here, it means that we need to build uh, the grid wall over here. So we start at here. We cannot even jump to ourselves. It got blocked by the wall, so it never actually take any string. Hence, it will return an empty string. Because, you know, like, this is the case where, like, imagine a marathon, right? Your start and stop line is, at, is the exact same line. So technically, you do not run any distance to complete the race. It's a marathon where the start and the stop line is the same line. Maybe I can draw. Basically, when you, by you standing there, right, you are already at the stop line as well. And so you have finished the race. Okay, next up. That doesn't matter. Okay, next. Same case for this. I think I will just skip it. Um, these are the same. When it's empty, it will be filled in with the default value. Uh, and this will produce a syntax error, okay? When there's no colon, right, it's a bit tricky, meaning when there's no colon at all, it requires an integer. No colon requires integer, okay? I the okay, next part is much i think this sound is what uh yeah is asking for uh what about this when we somehow like face a negative step right correct the answer is reverse if you actually try it out it will be reversed remember like when we have like uh one step for uh when we do a step we always step to the right this is called a positive step okay when we have a negative step, oops. When we have a negative step, meaning uh, we just move backwards. This is negative step. So when we do this, right, uh, it's very important. We observe, we start here at five, meaning we start at here. Then we stop at zero, meaning we're gonna build a great wall at zero over here. Right, and then it does a negative one step. So it will jump one, negative one, another jump, negative one, another jump, negative one, another jump, negative one, and another jump and hits the wall. Basically, you just take whatever is jumped on. And in that case, it will give us F, E, D, C, D. What about this? What happens if we do S, empty to negative one. Again. Uh, there's no start position. Now when there's no start position, it means we must take the default value. And now there, here's where it gets different. When, uh, well, yeah, let me finish this first. Uh, okay, when, Correct, the answer is fat. So when we do, uh, when the step is negative, right, uh, the default value for this is no longer applicable. So when it is negative, we'll, uh, everything is reversed, meaning we'll start at here. This is the natural start, and this is the natural stop. So you gotta imagine that it's flipped. So we'll start here at F, and we'll build a great wall here, over here. And we do we start doing the jumping. Hence it will give us as uh uh Tadeus has mentioned F E D. Okay. Another lecture example is when you just reverse everything. No, it's not a fat. Okay, one thing I have, one thing. Uh it's uh strings are not circular, so you cannot like from here and then you go back here. This one cannot, this one cannot. String is not circular. So, so in recap, uh, yeah, yeah, push it, push it, push it. Uh, 
Let me just go here first. In recap, if step is positive, uh, if step is positive, uh, the start will be at the beginning and the stop will be at the end. The start will be at the left, basically. If step is positive, you go from left to right. If you're negative, you go from right to left, including the start and stop position. So in this case, right, we have another example, like, such as like this thing. This one is actually pretty interesting. Does anyone want to make a guess? Why is it? Why does uh, this part, this thing returns an empty string? Correct, it starts and stops at the same place. Um, when we see index like this, right, what we mean is that this is a, the positive index. There is actually a negative index which we don't really much use, which is basically the reverse of it. Now, reverse index, negative index, we start at the back with minus one, and we move from right to the left. It's like Arabic. So we start at minus one. We start at here. Oops, my friend. We start at minus one over here, and then move to the right. And each each time it will get smaller, smaller, and smaller. Okay. Okay. Okay, uh, where were we? Okay, I think that's all for string slicing. Are there any questions? Like if if not, just uh, thumbs up. If there are no questions, just give me a thumbs up. Okay, what if small, big, negative? Okay, that's, that is actually a very, very good question. Very good. So, yeah, as, Jer uh, as Jeremy has answered, it will return an empty string. So, say I have, uh, again, line of boxes. Say I'll, uh, I'll start, say, here, ends here. And then I have a wall over here. All right. Now maybe like it doesn't make sense, uh, but um, since there are no wall, right? There are no walls to penetrate. Then I can simply jump. Well, um, I think the easiest way to explain this is that um, in string, right? It's it's like running a marathon, law. It's like running a marathon, um, where you stop once you cross the finish line. And in this case, right, this is the finish line over here. <gasps> Oops. The finish line is over here. So you kind of have crossed the finish line again already. So you do not do any run anymore. So you don't do any distance, hence you're done. Okay. Um, okay, there's actually another Good question. Uh, actually, uh, would, do you mind? Uh, do you mind sharing it to uh, everyone? Your question. Okay. Uh, Mutu has asked, like in the case where you do a double string slicing. Hence, if you do a double string slicing, it is possible. Basically, then if you have a as And then another this, or and or even another. Basically, you do it from left to right. You process this. You, it will return you some string. Then you do this again. It will return you some string. Then you do this again. Keep on repeating the process. Okay, it is possible. Just make sure that uh, just make sure that you don't run out of string once you reach the end. I think that's the most important. Okay, because I think uh, it's very important that you actually maintain index. Because 
if you exceed your index, right, it will give you an index error. For example, banana. And then I want to take the 10th character. Remember, a string is not circular. So it does not, once it exceeds, it doesn't automatically go back to the front. So if I do this, it will give me an index error over here. This is a very common index error, especially later when you are doing a re iteration or recursion or for loop in future, in the next two to three lectures. So just keep this in mind. Lah. Don't make sure that you don't exceed the index that is available in your string. Okay. Now I'm going to do a little detour uh, from your tutorial materials. So I want to, uh, sorry, uh, did someone ask a question? You take the string of the first, yeah, correct. Correct, 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 Putu. Okay, I'll take a little detour first. I'm going to introduce you about the ASCII table. Now you might ask, why do we need the ASCII table? Because this particular shitty table over here is very important in us when we try to compare string. We have been comparing numbers earlier, right? 4 greater than 3, 4 greater than 4, and everything. But then, uh, we also need to be able to compare string. You remember the sort feature in Excel, or sort feature in Microsoft Word, where you just try to sort the list alphabetically? So it's the same case out here. And computers use this ASCII table to sort things out. So generally, when we say uh, uh, the, the higher it is on the list, the smaller it is. So in this case, we know that uh, K is bigger or greater than D. And P, uh, capital P is smaller than lowercase p. For, I know this table can be kind of confusing and you cannot memorize. That's why you can include this in your cheat sheet. But generally speaking, if you want to say, this is the order that we go. Lah. The number one is the special characters that you can see on your keyboard on the number pad. So I assume that some of you are taking a swap test. It means that some of you are on your phones. But for those of you who are currently joining the Zoom call via your laptop, Look at your laptop right now. Look at the top bar, the numbers. If you see the characters on top of each number, those are the special characters and those are one of the smallest, followed by numbers. And then more special characters. And then the uppercase and then lowercase. In the easiest set way to observe, just imagine a dictionary. The word apples, the word apple comes before banana. It means that apple itself comes before it's smaller than banana. Now, okay, there's a question. How about alphabets accenting like E, 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 E? Okay. Uh, my answer is I don't know. I frankly don't know. You can try it on your Python, but we can assure, I can guarantee you 100%. It's not going to show up in the exams. Yeah, good point. Like, if you have any question, right, to be honest, like you don't have to ask me, cause, okay? Because I'm not a moving idol. It's very, it's a very good practice to yeah. <laughs> No, I don't have COVID. I just sneeze. It's a good practice for you to just try out an idol and try out things. Uh. Are we supposed to memorize? Um, no. The table itself, no. But the list, this list over here, right? The, the list over here, kind of. You kind of have to memorize. That's why uh, the rule of thumb that Prof Adi taught me is that we memorize a dictionary. Remember the way a dictionary sorts things, which is here, defined in the lexical graphical order. That first, you compare letter by letter from left to right. So in this first case, we have A, B, C, A, B, D. A is the same, so we move on to the next part, which is B, which is still the same. Move on to the next part, C and D. We know that C comes before D, hence this one is smaller and this one is bigger. Okay? Winner is always decided when comparison reaches a different letter. So example, this one, A, B, and we have A, 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 B, 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 C, 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 D, D, D. I mean, naturally speaking, we always think that, oh, this one looks longer, this one is bigger, but that's not the case. 
because in this case, in the second character, right, this is B, which is bigger. Hence, this is bigger and this is smaller. Just like your dictionary. If you have a physical dictionary right now, go have a look at it. And lastly, anything is greater than nothing. So in this case, we have A, B, C, D and A, B, C, which is the same for the first three. And the next one is D compared to an empty string. Well, this is obviously bigger. Lah. I mean, like this one is obviously, this is the only time where longer means bigger. Live by these three rules and you should be safe. Lah. Any questions? Uh, if you guys are okay, just raise a thumb up. All right, cool. Moving on. Next one. Oh, okay. All right, what about just now about P? Okay, so here yeah, I can. So for example, we have papaya. Uh, wait, let me. Uh, okay, let's, for example, we have banana. and banana. In this case, banana, this thing is bigger than over here. So the correct sign is this. This with a value to true. This is when, I mean when there's capital and there's uppercase and lowercase. Correct. Correct, yeah, che. A, yeah, che. So in this case, this is bigger. In a dictionary, right, when you list a dictionary, uh, the lowercase banana will show up later. Okay. Remind, remember uh, this one, right? Uh, you need to compare like letter by letter from left to right. So in this case, like when say, say, we, we Uh, okay, I can show you, but like later the slides will be shared, la, the basic slides will be shared to you. I mean, you can take a screenshot if you want. So in this case, like if you have like a banana and banana, this one is still bigger because we compare here and then this one is capital A. Alright, cool. If you guys want this table, then I can just screenshot this and send it over to our telegram group chat. Just give me a moment. Oops, my bad. Uh, later, later. I mean, I got some private stuff there. Ah, never mind. I'll just send it later. Okay, anyways, I need to move on because I'm running out of time. Uh, I guess we did too much digressing, but we had fun. Okay, operator precedence. Um, yeah, basically, um, I think we did this earlier in, in the beginning where uh, when we do math, oh, okay, actually I'll make some minor edits here. Okay, cool, perfect. Now, when we do math, right, there are some orders that we need to do first. So in this case, Python follows this operator precedence where we start with exponentiation and then multiply, divide, modulo, and floor division, then addition and subtraction, then comparison operators, equality operators, assignment, and then da, 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 da. So in this case, you do not need to worry about, you do not need to worry about the, the ones in the red box because we won't be seeing them anytime soon. Now, for those of you who are confused, like I think you guys don't need to be confused. I think you can just, whatever you learn in high school, high school or middle school or primary, that's perfectly fine. But if not, then you can always use this cheat sheet called board mass, or sometimes I use it bit mass, where you start with brackets, orders or indices, division and multiplication as one layer going from left to right, and then addition and subtraction going from left to right. Cool? Easy. So what will be the values of the following? So it's, easy, it's pretty easy. Uh, for this one, we'll do the uh, multiplication first. 6 plus 1 is 7. 
this one will do this part first, then this part, then this part, which I don't know what the answer is. This one is same. This, this, and this. And finally, this one. Actually, this one is pretty interesting. Not zero plus one. Can anyone give me the answer for that? Just type it in the Zoom chat. Okay, uh, just a little note, uh, during, final, during practical exams and finals, you don't have access to IDLE. Uh, so you need to be able to evaluate this by hand. So the answer is correct, the answer is false. Because in this case, right, um, in this case, uh, most people will, maybe some of you will evaluate it from left to right. So we'll evaluate this first, not zero is uh, true. Plus one equals to two, which actually this is wrong because the correct way is actually, you, uh, since the plus sign has a higher precedence, you, operate, you, you count this first, which means this will return one, not one means false okay so you now know why order precedence is important and if you see here right it it doesn't really make sense because like uh yeah it doesn't really make sense because like why is there plus minus sign combined with com a comparison sign and then there's even like the assignment sign and there's even like not and or those kinds of things it doesn't really make sense this is why it's important because in Python it's very fluid, but you can just mix things up. Okay. It's okay. It's okay to be wrong. It's very it's good to be wrong. Okay. Um okay, a little a little more detail again. Uh um okay, I'm a bit out of breath. What do we have when we type as uh, I mean okay, la, like you guys kinda get that like uh, this should be valid as false, right? If you can see, and this should yield different results. Okay. I mean, if you guys can guess it already, it's because of the type, type conversion. The first one is an integer. Hence, because it's an integer, things will be calculated like an in, like normal numbers. Right. The next one is string. Because it's a string, it will treat it like a normal string. Uh, the plus sign means like just combining two strings together. Exactly, that's the point where I'm getting to after this. So you cannot mix things up. Lah. Generally, it's a huge sin to mix things up. Okay. So if you want to mix things up, as Yeche mentioned, you need to convert. You need to convert them. Okay. In this case, when remember earlier in the discussion where we talk about floor division and it just takes the integer. Now this is the actual function that you know, like this one is the, the actual function that just purely takes the integer and removes all the flotation numbers. And this function right can actually take in string as well, as long as your string is valid and not dirty. When I say dirty means like uh. You should not have like string like three point one four and then like there's an empty space behind. Or like, perhaps like uh, uh, four like this cannot. Okay, it must be clean to be able to be converted. Next is variables. I'm just gonna talk a bit about variables. Uh, I hope some of you already know about variables. So variables can store any type. So in this case, if you observe this particular line, um. It's a comparison of five greater than three, and in result, it will store the true value of it. Okay. So this will evaluate as error because A, B, and C has not been declared yet. So make sure that when you want to use a variable in your calculation, make sure you declare them first. So in this case, we have an example over here where if we take if this part only right, it um, it produces an error. Uh, but if you take the bottom part, okay, this is one part. This is one part. Uh, if you take the bottom part, then it can actually calculate because 
um, yeah lah, um, because it has been declared, it has been created. Okay, any questions? Thumbs up if no questions. Um, then, I mean like you can always try. I mean like again as mentioned before, I mean you should not, I, yeah. I mean like you should not be adding numbers with other things that are not supposed to be added. So I say I have M none, M plus three. You cannot combine none and three lah. Yeah lah. You cannot just you cannot just add none to numbers ah. It doesn't work that way. Or say three plus M. Yeah. No. Oh wait, what? What? No, none is not a string. None is the. No, none is not. Okay, none is not a. Okay, yeah. None is actually very special. None is a none type. Um, why Python have none, right? It's because sometimes we just need an object to represent nothingness. We just need an object to represent. Okay, it's just nothing. Not a string. Not an integer. Not a float. Nothing. It's a bit hard to grasp concept, but just take in mind that none, there's this type called none type. It's an object. It's just like, it's just none. It's an, it's a block. It's an empty block. And none is evaluated as false. Uh, because it's just empty, hollow. Okay. Any other questions? All right. I'm quite surprised. I started this class a bit earlier, but I end this class a bit later. I'm not done yet. Okay, next up, we have a turtle. Okay, uh, there are two ways to import, but generally, uh, just follow the earlier part. La, from turtle import star. Do not follow this format. La. Okay. None is a none type. So, um, yeah, I think as you all have guessed, uh, this is a none type. Uh, this, is, this should have been a square. No, this one just don't vote. Lah. This one is just, okay. just delete that. So this graphic is a square. Uh, for those of you who haven't figured it out yet, uh, I mean, I can draw it for you if you want. So, say, um, unfortunately, not for this course. I know other course does, but hey, try your best. Unfortunately, no, no, I don't give you extra. I cannot. No, it's not like I don't want, but I cannot give you extra credits for drawing something cool. I heard someone actually draw a Picasso's uh, artwork in using turtle. So yeah, I'm so sorry. Why does Python default the turtle to face the right? Uh, because I have no idea. I mean, is, is there a choice, Ma? If you want to set the orientation a bit different, then just make sure you rotate in the first place. Or. So following this, uh, this is the original direction, right? Then I'll draw, draw a line. Then do another rotation down and go down another rotation to the right and then another rotation to the right and basically going up. It's a square. Uh, okay, there's a question. For assignment, do we have to bring the arrows direction back to the original direction after drawing the star? Um, no, we'll just look at the icon. But if you can, if you do it, I mean, no problem, but nah, no need. But in a way, I do like your attention to detail because it's actually very important for this course for your attention to detail. The fact that you actually pay attention to the, the direction of the pen after it draws the star, it, it, I, it's important. Who marks the assignment? For this tutorial class, uh, someone else will be marking it, another grader, not the prof. 
Um, usually, two thirds of the tutorial class will be grading, but because I'm handling three classes, I won't be grading everyone. For this class, I'm not grading you. Uh, uh, I think I'm not so sure. Lah. I mean, uh, if you want the very formal answer, like what, like if very, if my conjecture is that, um, why is it the direction is facing right? Is because simply because um, I mean, like the formal answer is basically you can. Uh, that's what the creators of the turtle package wants to lah. By default, I mean you may speculate. And don't be sorry about speculating, but yeah, you gotta declare that that's a speculation and not an actual answer. But either way, it doesn't really matter, lah. So yeah, I mean, you can go to this website uh, to learn about about my uh, uh, Okay, or just Google Python turtle, and yeah, actually, this is how most programmers do. In fact. I think this is an understatement. I think uh, I'll revise this. This is how all programmers do Googling. Okay, so don't be don't feel ashamed about Googling. Actually, some of your materials might not be in your lecture notes, although I can kind of verify that you can you should have been you should be able to do all your assignments using the lecture notes alone, lecture notes and tutorial materials alone. If you cannot do it, there must be something wrong. Now, okay, the question is, is the optional practice enough to score well? I'll get that to you very soon, very, very soon. So just hold, hold hang on. Uh. So yeah, before we end, uh, later at the end of this, uh, just feel free to ask me anything about assignment one. Aside from that, uh, there's one thing that I need to introduce you, which is Kates. Uh, as you get mentioned, optional practice and everything. Yeah, uh, let me catch some breath first. Okay. So, the feedback for CS1030 every semester is that they lack practice questions. As you know, practice makes perfect, especially practicals. And if you ask me, is pra optional practice enough to score well? I cannot answer that because technically, like, it depends. I mean, generally, generally speaking, the very general say, um, Doing all the practice questions, optional practice will help you perform better in practicals. But there's no such thing in this world as a golden bullet. There's no such thing as a guarantee. As if you want to practice more, the professor has recommended Katis, which is openkatis.com. This is the professor's recommendation. Huh? So when professors recommend something, I strongly suggest you guys to actually do it. Where in Katis, there's actually a lot of problems. You simply just create an account. And go to problems. Wow, hi Nick. Oh my god, I guess this class is OP them OP people. Okay. So if okay, Nick, if you're done with all questions, right? So you get you can do Katis. I think Katis will interest you. Or perhaps you are already even in on Katis. I don't know. So on Katis, there's a lot of questions. You can just like sort by difficulty. And from the professor's point of view, right, uh, for 1010E, 10 you can simply do Katis for the level difficulty level of one, one point. You just sort by difficulty and do them. So for example, do you have a problem, hello world? When hello world, you simply just need to uh, create an output containing one line, which is string hello world. So you just need to print hello world. Submit using code in Python and submit. Now, to code in Python, you just need to go to help and go to Python. And then here, there's some explanation on how to actually code in Python and submit to this platform. So yeah, please, please, please do try cut this, okay? And then next is my personal recommendation, which is Kaggle courses, Kaggle mini courses, where, um, yeah, for those of you who are very, 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 very new to Python, very new, well, this is your first ever touching with coding and sorts. I strongly suggest you guys to take this course, uh, Python course. I know that Kaggle is actually focused more on data science, data analytics, machine learning things. 
But so for you guys, I think you just focus on Python. And for if you click Python, right, there are a few lessons that are actually very, which is actually a subset of the materials in our course. So that's why if you take this course, you will be learning a lot in an easier way. And hence will actually kind of offload your workload in the next few weeks because you do not need to play catch up. You can actually start very early and wrap the bell curve. And perhaps if you are actually interested in machine learning or data science, you can, after taking this course, you can immediately take other courses, Pandas, data visualization, intro to machine learning, intermediate machine learning, which in my opinion, you guys can do it because these are meant, these courses are created for amateurs. And perhaps after taking these courses, maybe you are interested to move to change majors to say statistics, data science analytics, business analytics, computer science perhaps, and move on from engineering, which is quite common. So yeah, I strongly recommend you guys to try this one out. And lastly, um, yeah, I have this GitHub page, uh, which have this uh, online tu uh, tutorial for CS 10.0E. Not, not as good as Kaggle, but it's actually, it's basically a complete package. La. If you guys want to try it out, feel free. You guys can try it out here. La. Um, uh, shit, my bad. Yeah. Anyways, that's that's uh that's my closing for this tutorial. I'm so sorry that we kind of exceed the time. Uh, for those of you who haven't who aren't in the, uh, the Telegram group, feel free to join. Again, uh, Telegram Telegram group is not compulsory. You are you don't have to join, but if you want to join, feel free to join. But other than that, um, we cannot use IDLE during PE. Can. Can, can, can. In fact, we are, uh, you can use IDLE during PE. Can. Since, but I think it's only for this semester uh, because it's online. If it's physical, I don't think you'll be using IDLE because IDLE can, doesn't work with, because uh, it doesn't work with Exemplify. Okay, then I guess uh, that's the end of this tutorial. Thank you everyone for taking this journey with me in the very first tutorial. I think just a little note, tutorial is not in no way ever graded. So you not attending this tutorial is, feel free. If you, tutorial is not your taste, if you think you don't learn much from tutorial, feel free not to come to my tutorials anytime again in the future. But no, seriously, that's not sarcastic. I don't mean that as sarcastic. What I mean is that, um, you guys are not adults and you guys can make your own decisions on whether to come or not. And you guys, I know you guys can make better decisions like pay. Perhaps these two hours can be spent better by doing, by going out to lunch with friends or studying other things. So if you don't want to come to tutorials, it's fine. If you want to leave halfway to do your swap test, fine. If you want to come halfway in the middle, fine. Do whatever you want to do. It's not graded. Your participation is not graded, but however, by participating actively, right, you then can actually uh, learn the materials better and more in depth. With that, uh, I end this tutorial. I'll be fielding questions for 10 minutes, for five minutes only, because I need to grab lunch because I have a class at two. Um, I'll stop the recording here.